Hello there, this is Sam Robinson, lead level designer on Stealth Think 2. In today's video we're going to be talking about the level editor. The level editor in Stealth Think 2 obviously allows you to make your own levels, but also upload them to a database where other players in the Stealth Think 2 community can download your levels, play them, complete them, and then rate them. So, when you load the level editor, you'll be presented with the editor menu. You've got four options here, new level, load level, save level, and exit. These options below are greyed out and will become available later once you've started your level. So we'll create a new level, and here you can choose the size. I'm going to choose the one on the right for this tutorial. The first thing I'd like you to notice is that in the lower right corner you have this tooltip. So I can press L here and it'll show me all the controls. Tapping L again will make this go away. Now if I press Y, this will bring up the Game Objects menu and this is where you'll find everything you need to make a level. As you can see, the tooltip has changed again and I can press ZL or ZR to cycle through these categories. The first two tabs cover Game Objects. These are all objects that the player will interact with and that will be visible on screen. So here we'll find things like Collision, Moving Platforms, Containment Fields, Doors, Sensors, Switches, so I can move around these objects with the thumbstick. Pressing A will select the object that I have highlighted. And now I can use the left thumbstick to move it around my scene. And then I press the A button to place it. If I need to move an object that I've already placed, I can just highlight the object, press the A button, move it around, and then press the A button again to drop it. So it's pretty straightforward for me to go in and out of this game objects menu and pick and choose whatever I need to go into my level. Whenever I select an object in the Stealth Think 2 level editor, the Game Objects menu icon disappears and this new icon appears in the lower left. This is your Edit Options and the Edit Options allow you to modify the settings of an object as well as more universal applications such as duplicating, deleting your object or toggling its state between on and off. So if I go into the settings of my start point, I can change the direction that the player will be facing at the start of the level. I can also determine which gadget the player will be using. If I go into the settings of a switch, I can determine here which objects that switch will toggle. If I go into the settings of a light, I can change its colour. A lot of objects in Stealth Think 2 are also able to be attached to moving platforms. I can link a light to a moving platform, an exit point, a switch, a laser, a sensor beam, a buzzsaw, I can even take a patroller and assign that to a moving platform and the moving platform becomes its patrol path. In the Stealth Think 2 editor there are a number of shortcuts that you can use to speed up making levels. The ZL button is the main shortcut button. So if I select a piece of collision and hold down ZL, I can then use the right thumbstick to scale up my collision. So if I make it wider and I increase the height, and then I press A to place it. I can also do this with a light, so if I select a light and hold down ZL, I can use the right thumbstick to increase the range of that light. If I take a laser, I can hold down ZL and I use the left thumbstick and I can change the direction. I can get a patroller and I can do the same thing. By holding ZL I can use the thumbstick to change the direction, but the right thumbstick will also change the range of that patroller. So you can modify the scale, the range, the direction of objects very quickly in the Stealth Think 2 editor by just holding down the ZL button. Another great shortcut is that I can hold down ZL and ZR and that will run the level. Whilst I'm playing I can hold down ZL and ZR again and it'll take me back to the editor. This is obviously very handy for quickly making and testing your levels. You can also use ZL to quickly link switches to targets. If I hold down ZL and press up on the D-pad, that's my first link, and I can link that to a door. If I hold down ZL and press right on the D-pad, that's my second link, and I can link that to something else, like a light or a robot. The same applies for down and left on the D-pad, those would be my third and fourth links. If you'd like to view the rest of the shortcuts, just press L at any time and that brings up the controls. And then hold down ZL and it will show you all the shortcuts that relate to this shortcut button.
So this was a very brief overview of the main aspects of the level editor, but I think I've explained the basics well enough for you to go into the editor and explore the rest for yourself. Once you've made a level that you consider decent, you can save and name your level and then upload it to community maps. And then other players in the Stealth Inc. 2 community can download your levels, play them and rate them. So we're very much looking forward to seeing this community grow and we're looking forward to seeing levels that do things that we hadn't even considered before. So Stealth Inc. 2, a game of clones is available on the eShop right now. Thank you so much for watching these videos. Thank you for your support. I hope these videos have helped explain what we're about and what the game's about. And thank you if you've bought the game already. Uh, it means a lot to us and we really hope you're enjoying it. All of you take care and all the best. Goodbye.